memory optimization technologies in virtualization uh, is a hot topic right now. There's a lot of different solutions from different virtualization vendors. And in this session, I really wanted to focus on what's being done with Windows Server 2008 R2 SP1 and dynamic memory. And I'm really just going to start off from traditionally how we handled memory with virtual machines, what we're seeing in the industry as some of the solutions, and then what's been chosen to actually do with Hyper-V in SP1. And if you really go back to traditional virtualization, the idea is I, I have a fixed amount of memory in my host. And that could be Hyper-V, virtual PC, whatever. And I carve off a certain amount of that is used obviously for the virtualization host, so the Hyper-V server. And I can carve this up into virtual machines. So virtual machine one would see that amount of memory, which blocks off to here. Virtual machine two uses this piece of memory. Virtual machine three uses the rest. And really we had to go that approach because we have to make sure a virtual machine has enough memory to do its work. And so if the peak load of this VM is 2 gigs, I have to give that VM 2 gigabytes when it turns on. It's kind of like you're buying a new refrigerator. I don't buy the refrigerator for its average use, which is a couple of cans of Coke, a pint of milk, and some butter. No, it's for Thanksgiving turkey. It has to be able to fit in. I have to be able to handle the peak loads of each VM. And usually they're not using all of that memory. Often you might be using half or a quarter of the memory, but it has to be allocated and be there when we do get those high usage scenarios. So a lot of waste is going on here, and it really restricts the number of virtual machines I can get on a physical host because of those memory limitations. When it comes to CPU, I can carve up a CPU and virtual machines can allocate a portion of that CPU time. Same for disks, virtual hard disks that dynamically grow as it needs the space. Memory, I assign that amount of memory the VM needs and it directly maps to physical RAM, which restricts the VMs I can get running on it. So what are some of the solutions we typically see? So let's start off with, we've already heard of memory over commit. So the idea of memory over commit is that the similar picture there. We have the physical memory in the box. Again, we carve off a certain amount for that parent partition, uh, the virtualization host. And then we have a virtual machine. But the way we actually work is we promise this virtual machine, let's say, two gigabytes of RAM. But we're kind of going to work on the assumption that in normal circumstances, it never needs more than one gigabyte. So when we're doing our planning, we think, well, in reality, we're only going to carve up that much memory. So instead of two, we're going to plan that it will usually use one gig of RAM. This next VM, same thing. We'll give it two, but again, we think it only really uses one in normal circumstances. Same for the next one, next one. Each of those guys, we give a gig two, a gig two, etc. So as you can see, I've allocated eight gigabytes of actual RAM to virtual machines, I've only actually used 4 gig of physical RAM on the server. The idea being that, okay, let's say this guy does need 2 gigabytes. I've planned for enough spare capacity in the box that, hey, there's another gig over here. He can get that extra memory when he needs it. I've done my planning correctly that when this VM, the second one, requires more memory, this guy is at a lull point. So they can each borrow and give back additional memory beyond that initial one gigabyte, for example, as it needs it. And that's key here. I mean, proper planning is always going to be the most important thing when we're trying to do any kind of consolidation of virtualization, even with CPUs, with disks, with, with anything. I have to make sure I understand what loads I'm placing on a single host. And there's technologies out there. Um, for example, we have performance resource optimization with Hyper-V and SCVMM and SCOM which can actually look at memory and CPU utilization of VMs in the host and move VMs between hosts if we can get uh, better performance and a more even distribution of our resources. 
So this is memory over commit. Essentially, we tell each VM, you have two gigs of memory, or four gigs, or eight gigs, whatever, but on the actual host, we can, depending on our planning, maybe only count for half of that memory. And we're banking on the fact that the operating systems will not use all of the memory at the same time. Now in a Windows XP world, this sort of technology works. Essentially, the, the operating systems only use the memory they need. If you look at Windows XP, it starts up, Windows 2000, it only used the memory it actually needs for applications and some for caching. So the way these memory over commit technologies work is they don't assign any physical RAM to the VM. It turns on and essentially as that VM starts writing to its memory, it actually starts allocating bits of physical RAM as it's written to in the VM. So it's basically allocated on write. So only when the VM tries to write to that piece of memory does the virtualization manager actually start assigning physical RAM to it. Like I say, with the older operating system that works because they're not greedy, they only use up the memory that they really need. Now we look at today, and operating systems are kind of waste not want not. If it sees two gigabytes of RAM, I'm gonna use two gigabytes of RAM. Uh, we have technologies like Superfetch in Windows that actually goes and says, well, based on previous usage patterns, I know that you're probably going to start this X, see which uses these DLLs, and actually starts bringing it into RAM before you ever use it. So it doesn't want to leave any memory empty. And we can see that if we look at Task Manager in Windows 7, as, as you can see here, the free is generally going to be very, very low. But you look at available, and available is high. But it's saying, I'm going to use this memory that's here for caching. I'm going to pre-cache things into memory. Now, if a process needs that memory, it can flush that stuff out of cache and give it to processes, but we're not going to see empty memory. It's not going to have this, well, I've only written to these parts of memory. So you can probably start to see the problem with this allocate on first write. With the newer operating systems and Linux, etc., they do a similar thing now. If we see memory, we're going to try and write to all of that memory. Which means that allocate on first write means this VM is actually going to want two gigs of actual RAM in memory, it's writing to all of that memory. So the savings of that, that overcommitment and that allocate on first write, it doesn't work with the neural operating system because, hey, I see memory, I'm going to use it. So that's one technology, the whole memory overcommit, promising more memory than we physically have and allocate on first write. But there are other technologies. So something else is page sharing. And the idea of page sharing is, again, we have multiple VMs. So we've got VM1, VM2, VM3. And I have my physical RAM over here. And memory is actually divided into pages. And in a normal, in the past, a page was small. It was four kilobytes. And the way these operating systems actually work is, they carve up the memory into these pages, and when applications use the memory, it says, I want the memory, the data in this memory page at this offset. And so we have all these different pages, very, very small 4K. So let's say this color is a 4K page, and that page and that page has the same content. That page and that page has the same content. That one has the same content. And normally in memory, I'd be storing all those 4K pages multiple times. 